I got some bad news. Walter Wade, Jerron Boots in his IBF champion, his fight canceled. Get it out of here. Fight with Cody Crowley will no longer be taking place. This is the bad news. Why ask why? I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. I've been in this game long enough to know how these things work. If you haven't heard the reason why the fight has now been canceled with Cody Crowley, his mandatory. So keep in mind, Jerron Boots in his ton of talent, ton of promise. I followed him for quite some time. Been looking forward to this fight. It was a hometown feel good fight, but the fight is no mas. The reason being, Cody Crowley was forced to withdraw. So it says, Cody Crowley has been forced to withdraw from his IBF welterweight fight with Jerron Ennis. And that was slated for July 13th in Philly after he failed his pre-fight eye exam. Not even in the eye exam. They ain't looking for I. The A and the K. I'll make your face crook to the side. Now when you smile, everybody got to look from the side. Yeah. What song is that? Not even in the eye exam. They ain't looking for I. The A and the K. I'll make you. Let me know if you're a hip hop head. If you know what song that's from. So basically, July 13th is over. The fight might still continue, or a fight might still continue, but it's not going to be Cody Crowley. Doctor said no. Crowley said at last month's press conference for the fight that he recently underwent eye surgery. And I talked about this, and I said that was a little bit alarming because he's been a long time mandatory, and he's saying he went through a recent eye surgery, and we know how those go. Eerily similar to, hey, stop that kid, man down. Errol Spence Jr. When Errol Spence Jr. had on paper his biggest fight, he was slated to fight none other than Manny Pacquiao from General Santos. I, I want to, I believe, uh, do, 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 do. Woo, woo, woo. right? Scheduled to fight Manny Pacquiao in Texas, where he's from. The biggest fight at that given time. It was announced. They did a press conference. The works. Fight got canceled. Errol Spence was in a very nasty car crash that nearly claimed his life and subsequently he has some damage that was done to his eye apparently because he started having eye issues after that moment and i'm definitely connecting that to the car crash because we never heard of any detached retinas or any issues from errol spence and his eyes up until the car crash so that's what this reminds me of. Eye injuries are clearly no joke. The ESPN article, let's see if it says anything new. Cody Crowley was forced to withdraw from the IBF welterweight fight with Jerron Ennis on July 13th after he failed his pre-fight eye exam, sources told ESPN. The expectation is that Jerron Ennis will still defend his 147-pound belt against a new opponent on that date, but nothing has been finalized Crowley undefeated 22 and 0, 31 Canadian ESPN's number six. He said last month that he had an emergency double eye surgery, which is what I talked about. And I said earlier in the video, I thought that was weird since his last fight. That was a major decision win over Abel Ramos, March 2023. So he's had inactivity and he had this emergency double. That means two eye surgery. Crowley, the IBF's number one contender, was set to earn 585000 with Eddie Hearn because they won the purse bid almost $4 million. TGB Promotions, basically PBC's promoter, they bid $2 million. So they were trying to get this fight. Ennis was slated to make $3.3 million with this 85-15 split. So career high payday, I mean, I don't know in this situation, since it's not Boots' fault, I don't know if he still gets that exact money. I don't know. I That's a good question. I really don't know how that happens. I don't understand because if you're, I guess the purse bid is the purse bid, but you put up that exact amount for this particular fight. Now we're going to have to get a substitute opponent. Does his paycheck change? I don't know. Maybe they pay him 
what he was supposed to get regardless? That's a good question. If you guys have heard anything or situations similar, because I mean, if I was a promoter and I bid $4 million for a particular fight and then said fight for unforeseen situations like this eye injury, I wouldn't want to pay the $4 million and then this 85-15 split if you have to get a late replacement. So there has to, I, I would imagine, don't quote me on this, but I would imagine in the contract there has to be something like um, if for some reason the fight is canceled or it's a last minute change because it's boxing people fail PED tests and all kinds of stuff like that so I would imagine there would probably be some type of protection or insurance for the promoter who's hosting the event in the event that this would happen but I think it's also on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll see. As of me recording the video, there has not been a confirmed opponent. But I got this news, and it was sent to me while I was on live. And whew, I almost lost it. There's a difference between what I do and just being a boxing fan. And I understand I'm not trying to disrespect boxing fans. But boxing fans need to know their role because boxing fans, I've seen a lot of people who all of a sudden they want to play, you guessed it, matchmaker, and they want to fill in the blank on who Jerron Boots Ennis should fight. The only downside is many of these fans that are playing matchmaker they don't make money in the business they have never made money in the business they don't understand boxing as a business and they just blurt out various people and me being in this business making my coin in the business of boxing i'm here to tell you a lot of the suggestions that i've read from you guys are not really feasible a lot of them aren't reasonable at all at all and i will spend some time in the next minute explaining that for starters jerron ennis is fighting in less than 40 days you see it on the screen the target date is july 13th and in june early june june 4th today's date you're having a fallout with cody crowley that you didn't know about so that means from June 4th, today, Eddie Hearn and his team, they're going to have to scramble, say, hey, are we keeping this card going? You want to give Jerron Ennis the activity? That's what y'all said. Oh, activity, activity, activity. And that's what y'all were screaming. So now he has to scramble. Eddie Hearn has to scramble to figure out an available welterweight. Again, a lot of people don't understand how this works. For starters, this is a big this is bad news for boxing and it's a big predicament jerron ennis is a champion but he became a champion not from fighting a champion but he got his belt because then champion undisputed terence crawford didn't fight him and is fighting someone else so terence crawford people are even though his name is listed and they're letting him keep his belts right now he's moving up to 154 so being realistic crawford is not first of all crawford's not gonna fight in philly against boots that doesn't sound he didn't even fight errol spence who was a bigger star than boots in texas in fact he was on sean porter's show before the errol spence fight and he said he ain't doing it in texas because he's not why would he give his opponent that type of advantage so crawford is out of here furthermore crawford had his own fight august 3rd against madrimoff in a new weight class right now these are the ibf rankings they keep the two spots usually vacant so there's no one rated here or here the number three person was who he was already slated to fight which i just told you got canceled because of the doctors now i know the haters are going to say oh cody crowley's ducked him and stuff like that he didn't pull out of the fight the doctors pulled him and ejected him from the fight big difference People try to do this with Errol Spence too. You can't say someone's duck when they're not medically cleared. Sometimes this happens. I've seen it where fighters 
They do not pass a physical. They do not pass a brain scan. They do not pass any type of one of these litany of tests that they have. You can't fight. That's just what it is. They're not going to allow you to fight. Edwin Valero, the late big puncher, Edwin Valero, he got, I believe, in a motorcycle accident and he suffered permanent like brain damage in that accident so he had trouble fighting in america after that point if you guys look at his later career before he passed he had difficulty fighting america because he couldn't get clearance commission because nobody wants blood on their hand that's just how this works if somebody's not passing a brain scan and is showing irregularities or whatever the case is if you have an irregular heartbeat anything weird they're not going to let you fight because the blood would be on their hands if something happened so cody crowley I wish him a speedy recovery. So he's out of here. Number four, Giovanni Santillian. Only one big problem. He just fought on top ranks card, I believe for the WBO interim. And he got pulverized by Brian Norman. So this ranking came out before that happened. I'm assuming how badly he got knocked out. And I made a video about it. I'm pretty sure that he would have dropped on the rankings so this is him right here versus brian norman he got like bad i watched the fight it was like a knockout of the year and then you had brian norman posing next to him right so now brian norman is the wbo either the wbo or the wba champion let me let me see it tells you right there yeah, it doesn't tell you right here so brian norman destroyed him that's what y'all need to know so that's not a realistic fight. I mean, who would want to see a guy who just got knocked out? The, it happened the day of Tyson Fury's fight. When Tyson Fury fought Usyk, that's the day it happened. So that's May 18th, mid-May. Who wants to see this guy two months later after getting destroyed, not having any time to rest? So basically, Santill Santillian is not a reasonable opponent for Boots. Neither is Errol Spence. Reason being, he got a fight moving up in weight October against Sebastian Fandura. Now, I don't even know who this is. This is Jin from 106 and Park or something. But Jin Suzuki or whatever, this guy, maybe he's available. But who wants to see Boots versus a guy that no one knows who he even is? Now, here's I told you, here's the problem. The welterweight division is now a wasteland. Virgil Ortiz. Guys like Errol Spence. Hey, stop that cat. Terrence Crawford. They've all moved out of the division. These were top names, and now they're out of the division. Now you have Boots, who's a champion in the division. He left PBC as a new promoter. This number seven guy, I'm going one by one because he's the IBF champion, one by one through the IBF rankings. He already beat Karen, and it was a boring fight, and it was like the worst out of all the Boots fights that I could recall where you didn't get to sustain action because Karen was kind of in survival mode. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody would want to watch that again. So that's not a good Philly fight for your first fight with um, rematch room. Then number eight, this is a guy, again, that already fought Jerron Ennis and got knocked out. Now, I think he's with Harry, Harry Scarf. I think he's with Eddie Hearn. But who wants to see that? Boots versus Harry Scarf. Then this escrow, Usman. I mean, these aren't these aren't big fights. The Cody Crowley fight was much better and a bigger name that made more sense. Alexis Rocha, he's one fight removed from getting knocked out by Santillian, who got destroyed, as I mentioned earlier in this video, to Brian Norman. Josh Taylor just fought in a rematch. He should have lost the first fight to Catterall, but he definitely lost the second one to Catterall, and he's at 140. So 140 pounder coming off a lot. No one's going to want to see him quick turn around, come back. This guy, Gabriel Valenzuela. I don't even know who he is. David Avocado. Crawford just knocked him out. I don't even know if he's been back since then. And then uh, Shakram Giasov. I don't even know who that is. So Eddie Hearn has his work cut out for him to try to find an opponent in my opinion that is better than the opponent that boots just had which is cody crowley in a division some people threw out brian norman's name but he just fought and he's a 
WBO champion, interim champion, is he going to fight on short notice? Plus, that's a top rank fighter. I don't even think Bob Arum and Eddie Hearn have the greatest of relationships. So would they make that fight a new top rank got belt holder with Jerron Ennis in Philly? I don't know. I don't really see that, but we'll see. And then the other guy that Eddie Hearn has is Connor Ben. But I still don't see Eddie Hearn making that fight in Philly. Connor Ben can't fight in the UK because he failed a PED test. So he would have to fight in the States, a place like Philly. But I think that would be for the first fight. That would be like, they say if you want to make an omelet, you got to crack a few eggs. You would have to either crack the Connor Ben egg or crack the Jerron Ennis egg in his first fight. I doubt that Eddie Hearn will do that, but we'll see. Maybe he does. We'll see. Other guys like Blair Cobbs, he's fighting Broner this weekend. Adrian Broner's booked up. So Crawford booked up, has his own fight. Errol Spence booked up, new division. Both of those guys have his own fight. Blair Cobbs booked up. I mean, who who can Jerron in his fight? Now, it's not my job to figure it out. It's Eddie Hearn's job to figure it out. This is the news, bad news for me because... I was looking forward to the fight. Now, everything that Boxing Ego told you guys about this earn with Hearn and this move to leave PBC. Now, I'm wondering, like I've been wondering, because I had criticism for the move. And I told you my criticism. It looked like Jerron was better just staying put where he was. Now, his very first fight with Eddie Hearn has this road bump where the intended opponent can't get cleared. And now all of a sudden you have to search for a new hometown fight. The card is pretty weak outside of Jerron Ennis being on it. I mean, you do got like Jaleel Hackett, who's a good fighter. He's fighting the guy that Connor Ben beat, Pistol Pete Dobson, things like that. But I don't even know where you go from here. And here's the thing is, if you have to pay Jerron Ennis three and a half million dollars you're gonna pay him three and a half million dollars for a fight that's not good this is the problem that i told you eddie hearn would face you're gonna have to overpay him you had to overpay him to lure him from pbc and now that you've done that and now when you don't have the stable for him and there's only a certain amount of fights people are like oh fight tim zoo he was supposed to fight virgil ortiz virgil ortiz has his own fight People are just guessing, throwing out names. I'm saying name a name that actually makes sense that would take an assignment like Jerron Boots Ennis on short notice with 39 days unless they move the date back or something. But that ESPN article made it sound like they're going to keep the date, keep the venue. And then it's still a loss of money because even if you move the date, you probably have to pay deposits or whatever for the venue. You've already invested money on the flyers. For Cody Crowley and Boots, all four, you did a press conference. So you wasted money already. And if you lose the venue or the date, then you probably have to pay at least something, a percentage of it or a deposit. So I, I like I said, it's not my job to figure out who Boots is going to fight. I'm just here to deliver the news. And to me, this is bad news because there's obscure names with the IBF and some of which jerron in his fought or as i went through in this video guys who are unavailable but eddie hearn who just lost a five by five tournament to frank warren good luck the bad guys probably know where you're at good luck